Welcome to Numerical Methods and Computations. My name is Akusan Imando. You can also call me Kombolo. And today, in a system of linear equations, we are going to look at Gaussian's elimination with partial pivoting. The only difference between Gaussian's elimination without pivoting and Gaussian's elimination with partial pivoting is that with partial pivoting, we do rule interchange. We know how to write our system in the form of AS is equal to B. Let's start by writing it in augmented form and solve it from there. So this is our matrix in augmented form. If we get our matrix in augmented form like this, we look at the first column and choose the highest number in magnitude to become our pivot element. In this case, 3 is the highest value here, so we have to find a way to let 3 become our pivot element. What do we do? Good. So we swap row 1 and row 2. And if we swap row 1 and row 2, this will be our new matrix. Now 3 is our pivot element, so we can use 3 to reduce 1 and 2 to 0. We have to find a number that when we multiply by the pivot element, and add it to 1, we are going to get 0. In the same way, we have to find a number when multiplied by the pivot element and add it to 2, we are going to get 0. So we pick 1 divided by the pivot element and negate it. And we are going to get negative 1 over 3. When we get negative 1 over 3, we multiply it by the pivot element. The pivot element is in row 1. So negative 1 over 3 times row 1 plus 1. And 1 is in row 2. So plus row 2. And we store our value in row 2. The same way, if we pick 2 divided by the pivot element and negate it, we are going to get negative 2 over 3. So negative 2 over 3 times the pivot element, the pivot element is in row 1. So negative 2 over 3 times row 1 plus, plus 2. 2 is in row 3, so plus row 3. And we store a new value in row 3. We can now find the new values for R2 and R3. Let's find the new values for R2. We pick 3 and 1. Wherever we see root 1, we put 3 there. And wherever we see root 2, we put 1 there. And this will give us 0. Next, we pick 5 and negative 2. And this will give us negative 11 over 3. Next, we pick 2 and negative 3, and this will give us negative 11 over 3. And we pick 0 and 0, and this will give us 0. Let's find the new values for our 3. So we pick 3 and 2. 3 is in row 1, so negative 2 over 3 times row 1. Row 1 is 3 plus row 3. Row 3 is 2. So we are going to get 0. And we pick 5 and 3. And this will give us negative 1 over 3. Then we pick 2 and negative 1. And this will give us negative 7 over 3. Then we pick 0 and negative 1. And this will give us negative 1. So the matrix, after reducing the first column will be this one over here. So we have to find a way to also reduce this side to 0. But before we do that, we have to check the second column and pick another pivot element. So we pick the highest number in magnitude over here the 5 is not part this side and this side so we have to pick the number with the highest value in magnitude to become our pivot element in this case 
the magnitude value of negative 11 over 3 is greater than the magnitude value of negative 1 over 3. So we maintain this. We now want um we now want this part to be zero. So what do we do? We pick negative one over three divided by the pivot element negative eleven over three and we negate it. So we are going to get negative one over eleven. And when we get negative 1 over 11, the pivot element is in root 2, so times root 2 over here, plus negative 1 over 3. And negative 1 over 3 is in root 3, so plus root 3, then we store our value in root 3. Now we can find the new values for R3. So we pick negative 11 over 3. And negative 1 over 3. So, wherever we see how to put negative 11 over 3 there, and wherever we see how 3, we put negative 1 over 3 there. So, this will give us 0. Next, we pick negative 11 over 3 and negative 7 over 3, and this will give us negative 2. And we pick 0 and negative 1. And this will give us negative 1. The matrix after reducing the second column is this matrix over here. We can now write our matrix in the form of an upper triangular system. So this is what you are going to get. We can now solve for S1, S2 and S3. Using back substitution from equation 3, we can divide both sides by negative 2. And when we divide both sides by negative 2, we are going to get s3 is equal to half. Then we put s3 is equal to half into equation 2 to find s2. This is equation 2. So wherever we see s3, we put 1 over 2 there. So you are going to get something like this. And when we break this down, you are going to get something like this. And we can now divide both sides by negative 11 over 3. And when we divide both sides by negative 11 over 3, we are going to get S2 is equal to negative 1 over 2. Then we put S3 is equal to half and s2 is equal to negative 1 over 2 into equation 3 to find s3 this is equation 3 so wherever we see s2 we put negative 1 over 2 there and wherever we see s3 we put 1 over 2 there so you are going to get something like this and when we break this down we are going to get this so when we get this we can divide both sides by 3 and when we divide both sides by 3, we are going to get S1 is equal to 1 over 2. So now, S1 is equal to 1 over 2, S2 is equal to negative 1 over 2, and S3 is equal to 1 over 2. So we are getting 1 over 2, negative 1 over 2, 1 over 2, transpose. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe this video on YouTube. You can also share this video on your social media platforms. If you subscribe, immediately I do new videos, you are going to be notified.